Welcome to this U-Surface Mesh video. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to use the masking feature of the U-Surface Mesh plugin. So first of all, let's uh, drag in a U-Surface Mesh grid. So we'll go up to uh, Place Actors, uh, where it says Search Classes, and type in U-Surf. We'll drag in a U-Surface Mesh grid. So I want the mesh to be on the right-hand side of the mesh. So if you imagine a texture asset um, to be laid out like this, and I want the uh, the mask to be on the right. So now what we need to do is we need to go to uh, a folder to create a texture asset. I've already enabled the Iliad uh, Unreal Engine plugin. Um, so if we come down to the textures folder, we can choose um, Iliad and then texture. Specify a name for the texture. Specify the, uh, the size that you want for the texture. For mask images, it doesn't really need to be a very big texture. Uh, specify the format, which I use gray eight. Specify the color to be white and choose create asset. So that creates as our, our uh, mask uh, texture asset. And we can right click that and then choose Iliad Actions Edit Texture. And what we want to do here is specify the color to be uh, black and then we'll fill it with, uh, with that color. We'll change the brush to be the airbrush. And we'll change the color to be white. So I'll just change the size and then now uh, this is the uh, the top of the mesh um, and obviously this is the right. So we can choose how we want this mask to be laid out. And then we'll save that asset. So now inside of the uh, U-Surface Mesh um, plugin we can choose Create Mesh that will now set up the, uh, the mesh to be um, using the dimensions that we specify uh, and the number of grid slots that we, uh, that we want on the side of the mesh. But we want to ultimately increase the complexity. So that just subdivides the mesh uh, to make it more detailed. So we want to now enable remove polygons. Come down to uh, the settings section down to where remove section is, disable remove using ray trace. You may want to re-enable that once we actually uh, move the mesh underneath the landscape. Um, so now we come down to um, the mask section, place the uh, mask texture into the mask texture slot and then now choose uh, Enable Mask Texture. So that now masks uh, the mesh using that texture. So now we can also change things um, about the texture. We can choose which channel we want to uh, um, pull from. So if you did create a, an RGB image, sorry, an RGBA image, then you can choose which channel you want to uh, pull the, uh, the mask from. We can also smooth the texture and we can also change the mask range. The mask range uh, selects um, the colors. So at a very low value, it'll select everything that is pretty much pure black. As you increase the range, it's like creeping up into the texture, uh, into the, the gray areas. And as the number becomes much higher, it'll only select everything that is pure white. So if we increase that, that number, the mask will con contract on the mesh. And we can also invert the mask as well, so that we keep everything around but actually remove the mask area. So once we're happy with that, we can then rotate the mesh. And we can also, just to demonstrate here, we can also 
uh, now raise the mesh up to the uh, max, max height value because at the moment it's on min height. So we're currently at zero, which is level with the actual plugin. If we choose edge height, then what we're doing is we're raising the mesh using the edge distance uh, up to the max height value of um, one meter. So to change the edge uh, settings, we can scroll down to um, the edge section and then we can change the edge range. So that's the distance from the actual edge into the center and then it flattens out. We can also smooth this edge and we can change various other settings uh, about it. Um, so then we can go back up to the uh, actions panel. So now we can turn on um, use surface normals and we can choose capture height. So that now projects down onto the floor and captures that into the mesh. And because we've uh, captured the surface normals, we now know uh, which direction um, from the landscape the mesh is facing. So we can now scroll down to um, the height detail section or height noise, it doesn't really matter which one you use. Enable that uh, noise texture. Turn on the, uh, uh, under noise alignment, we can change it to world aligned. So if we come down to engine, scroll down to plugins, and then go and find the use surface mesh content folder. And here there is a height noise folder. And here we have um, a bunch of textures that can be used to um, change the actual mesh height. Um, so if we choose one of these, place it into the noise texture slot, specify the, uh, the world size, And then now what we need to make sure of is that the, the mesh actually has enough detail in it. So we can scroll back up to where complexity is, change that to 30. And then we'll need to recapture. We can also change the uh, max height again. We can also change the uh, dimensions of the actual mesh to make it bigger. And then recapture. And in the uh, height uh, noise section, you can change the noise contrast so that we don't end up with these, um, these peaks. And then you can blend that with uh, height uh, detail section as well. So once you're happy with the, the mesh that you have, um, we need to place uh, a material on it, which I already have one here. This, uh, this material just um, samples the, uh, the virtual texture on the vertical parts and then on any um, parts that are uh, facing horizontal 
they'll um, they'll show a mud material. So we should place that into the use surface mesh plugin in the materials slot. At the moment, the texture in the red channel is um, showing all of the mud. So what we need to do is go to the um, render texture section, scroll down to set vertex colors, change the vertex red color to be painted with the uh, surface angle. And then you can change the surface angle settings under um, just enable render surface angle and then choose the surface angle here with a, very, with a range fall off. And then now you can choose render. So the other, one other thing we can do as well is just shift the mesh down along the normals. That just nudges it underneath the landscape a little bit. And then once we're uh, happy with that, we can then choose the stamp mesh uh, folder. Give it a mesh name. It'll automatically uh, append a number because the mesh name mode is name with number. So it'll automatically add whatever number it can onto here. And then just choose stamp mesh. So that mesh is now a static mesh uh, actor in the level. It's also created the asset, um, the static mesh asset in the uh, content browser folder. And if we open that up, then you can see that there. So at the moment, Nanite has already been enabled on this mesh as well. And if we uh, play, then because we're using uh, complex collision as simple, then that allows us to walk on the actual polygons. And if you want to, you can always um, Select back on the use surface mesh plugin and click re recreate mesh. That now makes it back into a, um, a procedural mesh. And then you can change, um, again, change the scale, change anything about the mesh you want, really. And just choose re-render. You can always enable auto-render if you don't want to click render each time. And that will just auto automatically render every time that you change the mesh. And there we are, the mesh has been stamped again. So it just shows you how easy it is to actually change the mesh, um, stamp the mesh and then recreate it and then stamp it again. And if you want to place the old one back in, you can always go down to, um, again, select the, the plugin and you can go down to the link section And if we delete, uh, if we delete the static mesh actor in the level, so if we go down to the the uh, static mesh that we stamped before, 
then we can place that static mesh into the uh, place mesh um, section. And then we can go back up and click um, place mesh. And that'll now place that one back in. And again, we can we can do that as much as, as many times as we want. We'll just go and set the uh, the previous one, place mesh. And then choose place mesh. So it's all interchangeable. And you can uh, process this um, mesh as much as you want using the Unreal mo Modeling plugin. So thank you for uh, joining me for this um, tutorial. If you liked it, then please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.